correct? Yes, it is. Elita, I see. Yeah. <coughs> I hear... Apologies, I, I have a bit of a cold, so my voice will be a bit cracking, but hopefully. Um... Being in the UK, have you tested? Sorry? Being in the UK, have you tested? Yes, lateral flow negative, but okay. um, yeah. Can I just confirm that you can see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so just before I start, I just want to really thank all the um, organizers for this workshop, uh, as I think it's been brilliant, brilliant week, and we all have learned lots of lots of things. And I'm really, really pleased to be able to share today with all of you some really beautiful multidisciplinary work that we have done with collaborators here at Imperial College, as well as UK Health Security Agency, uh, Warwick University. And, um, and a couple of other places. Um, and uh, today my talk will be about um, looking into genomics of plasmids and how analyzing these uh, plasmids we actually identified that the um, outbreak that we were investigating was spread across multiple species and all of them had the same plasmid carrying these IMP and MCR9 genes. Um, so I'm Alita Nikaita, I'm Advanced Research Fellow in Bacterial Genomics and Epidemiology at Imperial College. As well, I am Research Lead for Priority Pathogens theme as part of our Health Protection Research Unit um, in Healthcare Associated Infections and Antimicrobial Resistance. So just a little bit of a background, but I'm going to keep it uh, short as we already had a beautiful uh, presentation as well from Alvaro. Um, so carbapenemase producing antibacterialis are um, able to break down most common antibiotics used in hospitals to treat patients. And these are penicillin, cephalosporins, as well as carbapenems. Most common uh, carbapenemase gene families that are included in current diagnostic routine clinical tests to detect KPC, NDM, OXA48, uh, VIM and IMPS. And most common species carrying these carbapenemase resistant genes um, are E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, as well as Enterobacter cloquiae. Um, in recent years as well, resistant to colistin, which is the uh, last line um, therapeutics um, choices, especially for treating C CPE infections, is, is rising, resistance to colistin is rising globally. And this is partly due to this um, fairly new mobilized colistin resistant gene um, called MCR. And there's already 10 alleles uh, numbered one to 10 that have been reported for, for this gene. And here on, on the right, just to indicate that um, CP is really an um, endemic currently and here from European Center for Disease um, for this is a central report, um, they have actually looked at European countries and tried to highlight using these different colors how, how well these CPs, different species of CPs are spread within the countries. And you can see like majority of them are actually looking at interregional spreads as well. In some places there's already endemic situation and only very few countries that are in green where um, just sporadic report, sporadic cases are reported in this. So what we had in, in our hospital um, NHS trust, which comprises of five hospital sites, um, between the 2016 and um, 2019, um, as part of um, introduction of enhanced CP screening program, which started in 2015, um, a, num a CB carrying IMP gene was first observed, uh, observed in, in the hospital in June 2016, and that was done from a routine rectal screening sample. And from November 2016, increasing numbers of CPE isolates carrying IMP gene were identified across a diverse intrabacterialis species in at the three of the acute hospital sites that were being tested. So here in, in this figure, it's just to summarize that really the first case that started um, the longitudinal investigation of this, the, this bacterial group um, within our hospital. And it's just to show 
that there was like a, a diversity of species involved as well, a different number of um, days that actually patients were carrying the same, were still testing positive um, for CP bacteria. And just to indicate how long they actually spent um, within the hospital. Um, so we also looked at the data on patients who did test positive for CP to try to identify which of the months of particular year we actually had the majority of the cases. And we can see that in January and April 2019, we really can see very clear peaks of CP carrying M, M gene. Um, and it, it also shows that actually a continuous burden of patients colonized with such uh, CP isolates um, were identified throughout the hospital as kind of like you see, like nearly consistent, fairly high number um, constantly identified. And particularly those patients were identified, um, were colonized with Enterobacter species, which is indicated with, with red color. And in total, um, 424 invasion bed days per month were at the peak of, of, the, of the cases of imp, CP cases that we, that we had. So just to really like highlight it, how epidemiological, epidemiological investigation have identified that there was a problem with CPs and carrying in, particularly in, within our hospital. So what we did next with our brilliant PhD student who's doing, doing mathematical modeling and is very interested in patient networks, uh, we used electronic healthcare records for 116 patients that were colonized with the CP imp, uh, positive isolates. And he has drawn pathways for all of these um, patients across the hospital network. And the patient contacts clearly split into 12 separate clusters. So each of the clusters is indicated with this gray um, shading, apart from one of this, the biggest cluster, which involved 45 patients. And we were able to further partition this cluster into seven subclusters. Um, and here, each of the nodes is colored in specific CPE species identified. And any ward contact between the patients is just indicated with the um, black edge. And such analysis of CPE blind positive uh, contacts at regional individual hospital as well as ward level suggested that different species of our CPE positive M genes were involved in particular transmission events and potentially there could have been multiple transmission events present within our hospital um, network. So what we did to try to investigate this in more details, we collected the all available CP isolates from those patients. So we were able to collect and whole genome sequence 85 CP isolates from 82 out of 116 patients. And most patients carried only one species, but there were four, four patients who were colonized with two different species and we sequenced uh, both of them, hence the number is not exactly the number of the patient. And as expected, all CP um, blind isolates carried multiple um, beta-lactam resistant genes in addition to antimicrobial resistant genes. Um, but here mainly we concentrated to illustrate the imp gene present, which is indicated in the middle of the uh, circle here in pink. And the lighter pink presents imp allelic ver ver imp one allelic version, and the darker pink indicates um, imp allelic version four. Um, the blue outline here across the phylogeny tree in indicates presence of MCR9 genes. We were surprised to see that majority of our isolates were also positive for. Um, MCR9, and that would be approximately 81%, so 69 out of 85 isolates also carried MCO, MCR9 gene. Um, as I mentioned, this is phylogeny tree for all of our CP isolates, so as expected, um, species, specific species were clustering together, but of course this is not the, uh, the tree that we were looking into, particular individual uh, associations between 
um, the individual samples as we really were looking uh, interested to see that those isolates that carried in as well as MCR9 gene actually carried the same, had the same plasmid present, which is indicated by this most inner circle in, in, in green and blues. And this plasmid um, carried by majority of the isolates was the INC HI2 plasmid. So what we did further, we looked at the phylogenetic analysis of this INC HI2 plasmid. We had one uh, of our isolates previously sequenced with long reads using the nine, so we were really lucky to have like a full reference sequence of our own um, HI2 plasmid as well carrying um, in gene. And as you can see here, oops, sorry, uh, from the phylogenetic analysis, we identified the two major sublineages that clearly split the plasmid. So one was small as lineage A, which further could be subdivided into um, sublineages 1A and um, A8.1 A and A.2. But for these, we had only three isolates in total. And then lineage B, which was the major lineage um, in, our, in our study, and it could further clearly be subdivided into lineages B.1 and B.2. And each of the lineages as well were associated with particular antimicrobial uh, genes as well identified in the associated, uh, associated species where the plasma has been found. And um, especially, um, I, I, we saw the co-occurrence with B.1 lineage that um, also carried the isolates having plasmid of this lineage also carried resistance genes such as TETD, QNRB2, uh, OXA1, and MPH. We did also the um, backdating analysis to try to uh, date the potential um, expansion of this plasmid, and we got the results that it was around um, 1949. This plasmid could have emerged in total, and the most recent common ancestor for lineages A and B dated back in 1965 and 1967. And this estimate suggests that not only our plasmid in HI2 have been circulating, potentially been circulating among Interbacter alias for many decades, um, but they also have undergone an extensive ev evolution in, in the antibiotic era. Um, so after we have done this analysis and really break down and identify these particular lineages of, of the plasmid, we overlaid again that, uh, that data with a patient um, patient network and, and interactions um, map that we had. And here in this figure, you can see that in this case, the contact between the two patients is indicated by the specific color. Um, and we have mainly four of our hospital sites. And we have um, H, uh, our plasmid ink HI2 lineages indicated by the coloring in of the, um, of the edges of, of the, the circles. And lineage 1.A uh, is, is red. And you can see that we did have only two isolates so of this, um, only two isolates that had carried this plasmid uh, sublineage. And it was confined to cluster five, where only two patients were positive for this isolate. And then any uh, sublineage of B.1 was in dark blue, and B.2, which was our largest um, number of eyes that belong to this sublineage, are indicated with a light blue. And you can see that again, they were quite confined to our biggest cluster one, and even the subclusters within, within this patient network cluster were having a lot of interactions because the, the more interactions potentially the, the patients had the thicker the thicker was uh, the line between them. And there was a couple of smaller clusters confined to, to their own clusters carrying the uh, sublineage B.2, um, isolates with sublineage B.2 um, plasmid. Um, and we know that there were two cases within the cluster 1.2 that were identified as real in real time as related cases. And um, 
that also allowed us that these two cases were linked to multiple other cases across across the the other clusters just by by looking how how they were interacting and it, it potentially could have helped this sub sub lineage um, be point to to spread and um, we know that predominant plasmid clade B or lineage B um, was represented by 69 out of 72 of plasmids that we have sequenced in HI2 plasmids that we have sequenced. And uh, it was identified in approximately 60% of all of the cases identified in the study. And it was distributed widely across, across the hospital net networks, even though it was dominating within the cluster one. And um, I hope this as well shows, like we found it extremely interesting. I hope it also like how it captures your interest that these integrated uh, genomics, spatial temporal analysis actually can show the spread of plasmids containing not only imp genes um, as we showed here, but also they can um, potentially show some different interactions, some different potential clusters of any other plasmids carrying AMR. And to do that, we just, you know, had to follow the patient movements for a spe specialty care around, around the, our hospital network and, and try to investigate as well the pos possible, even multiple uh, introductions of, of these species carrying the uh, NKHI2 plasmid with positive for IMP and MCR9. So just to overlook again in slightly different way um, of the patient network, looking at the spatial analysis and, and a slightly different um, grouping. So you can see here, we looked at really like the potential transfers between the, ho the hospitals based on a particular sublineage of the plasmids. Um, and you can see again, that for a hospital, um, hospital five, um, there was only hospital uh, level data available. The, the, four, the four only intra-hospital movements are shown and actually very little movement. Um, we were able to show here just due to lack of data. But um, it does seem that there's some repeated transfers of patients between the wards within each of, of the other clusters um, are ag aggregated. Um, and they are indicated in, in, in this um, in this figure with proportionally greater uh, edge width as well and any transfers in between um, in between the hospitals the more patients were transferred between the hospital sites the thicker the line is and for patients with multiple CP isolates tra transfers are duplicated as well just to match each is isolate uniquely in, in the visualization which kind of like allows you as well to really see that it's not only patients within one hospital site that are connected and have interactions, but actually that a lot of interactions are happening as well in between hospitals that are looked after by the same um, NHS trust. Um, and just to summarize, um, I hope uh, again, like as has been discussed before, but it just strengthens to, to see that whole genome sequencing is a really powerful tool to detect not only novel antibiotic resistance mechanisms, but as well to, to track the poten pen, potential evolution of this and spread in between different bacterial species. And also it, it is able to develop um, novel rapid detection um, assays in case a, a new um, antimicrobial resistance mechanism is reported, uh, but there's no currently a routine diagnostics text, test for it and um, use the whole genome sequencing to characterize in detail the strains and plasmids as, as shown in, in the study that I have presented today, benefits the control and management of the outbreak. And in-depth genomic analysis of plasmids carrying um, AMR genes that might be not as commonly suspected to, uh, to be present as commonly um, as initially was thought really helps to reveal the wide distribution of the plasmids as well as genes within the species in general. And multi-layered method methodology, um, as we have used in, in this study, incorporating plasmid phylogeny with contact network analysis provides an invaluable tool for outbreak investigations. And um, 
the mentioned study um, as well highlights the importance of vigilance for unusual carbapenemase activity and, and further investigations how, um, how these things work. Um, as I mentioned, there's like a huge, huge multidisciplinary team involved in the study and um, uh, across a lot of different different sites. And we do have our as well paper on med archive as well as under revision currently with uh, Lancet Microbe as well. Um, so hopefully we'll, see, we'll be able to share it soon as, uh, as peer reviewed publication as well. And thank you very much for, for the attention and giving me time to share this lovely story. I'm very happy to, to, to take any, any questions. Thanks, Elita, for being on time and for presenting this nice story that I didn't know. <laughs> Joking. Yeah. Uh, uh, are there, uh, meanwhile, um, while you were talking, there has been a discussion going on in the chat. Uh, are there any questions for Elita? Any hand? Sorry, now I know that I have to check for raised hands. Um, so maybe we take the last talk because we are already late. We take the last talk because um, Clement is very far away and it's the middle of the night for him. And then we can have a discussion later if there are questions or 